What is the pressure at the bottom of the pool? The information given allows us to determine the height here, h, of the water in the pool. One liter of water This is, it has a mass of one kilogram, which means it has a volume of one over a thousand of a meter cube. A meter cube of, of water has a mass of a thousand kilograms, because that's the density of water. 1,000 kilograms per meter cube. The liter of water has a mass of one kilogram. So one meter cube of water, this is equivalent to 1,000 liters. So if I have 70,000 liters of water, this means that the volume of water is 70 meter cube. But the density, but the, the volume of water is equal to the length times width times height, h. We're told that this is 10, and this is 4 times h. So h is 70 divided by 40, which is, which is 1.75 meters. So this pool, the height is 1.75 meters. To find the pressure at the bottom of the pool, I know that at the top of the pool, the pressure is the pressure of the atmosphere. So the pressure at the bottom is the pressure at the top plus rho g h. The pressure at the top is 1.013 times 10 to the 5 pascals. And the pascal, of course, is Newton per meter square plus rho density of water, which is 1,000, and G is 9.8, and H is 1.75. So I can estimate, I can take the 9.8, let's say if I take it as 10, so this is 10 to the 4, so it becomes 1.75, times 10 to the 4, so it's 0 0.175 times 10 to the 5, plus 1.01. .01. So this is approximately 1.18 times 10 to the 5 pascals. That's an, a good estimate. OK, for part B, now, there are five swimmers with a combined weight of 3,000 newtons float in the pool. What is the pressure at the bottom of the pool? Now, we can think of the pressure using this formula, Pa plus rho GH. But, but also, the, the, essentially, the, the pressure at the bottom of the pool should support the weight of the water. 
in addition, of course, to the atmospheric pressure. So I can think of the pressure at the bottom of the pool as, first of all, there's a pressure of the atmosphere plus the force exerted by the water divided by the area. The force exerted by the water is the mass of the water times g. That's the weight of the water divided by the area, the area of the base of the pool. Of course, the mass, if I just have water to begin with, the mass would be the mass of the water is the density of the water times the volume of the water times g divided by the area. The volume of the water is the area times h. So the volume divided by, by the area is just h, and it's just rho g h, which is what we used before. But now this allows me to solve part b right away. Because now, with the five swimmers there, mg now is different. It is no longer only the weight of the water, but it's the weight of the water plus the weight of the five swimmers. So now, with the five swimmers there, so with the five swimmers, P at the bottom is PA plus M plus the weight over A. But now the weight M is not only the weight of the pool, it's not only the weight of the water in the pool, but MG is the weight of the water plus the swimmers. So whatever we had first, Plus, there's an extra. The extra is the weight of the swimmers divided by the area. And the weight of the swimmers is 3,000 newtons divided by the area, which is 40 meters square. So, so now the pressure, this was the pressure in the absence of the swimmers, the presence of the swimmers add an extra pressure of 3,000 over 40, which is 75 pascals. Is that considerable? Absolutely not. Notice that the pressure without the swimmers is 1.18 times 10 to the 5. That is, it's over 100,000. It's 118,000 pascals. The presence of the swimmers simply adds to the 118,000. It just adds a mere 75 pascals. So for all practical purposes, if there are 5 or even 10 swimmers, or more or less, it will not make any uh, meaningful change in the pressure at the bottom of the pool. 